Ever since Andy Warhol used soup cans and turned them into pop art, other artists immediately took notice. And today's artist is no different with the use of cereal and her own original way. So here we go. Hey, we're here with Ria Chandramani. She's known for her cereal box art. It's really amazing, but I got one question for her. Why cereal? I hate cereal. You no, hate cereal? Kidding, I'm kidding, I love cereal. I eat it every morning for breakfast, but why? Um, so a couple years ago, we're like edging towards 2020 and I was honestly so bored of doing commission work for people. Yeah, fair enough, yeah. Like just stuff that other people wanted. And um, I was talking on the phone with my friend and she's like, you know, when I think of you, I think of like you being a little kid. You love Sesame Street, you love like kid cereal. And I'm like, yeah, I want to make art that's really me. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. everything that's me, I want it on one canvas. And so I started like brainstorming, um, you know, what are all the things that make me me? And I kind of left it because then it's like Christmas, whatever. And I was at Muay Thai. I go to Muay Thai. But while I'm there also, I do a lot of thinking and I'm like, cereal box, like box, like I don't know, something just clinked in my head and then I started looking more into cereal, specifically children's cereal because that's the cereal I like to eat, like Fruity Pebbles, my favorite cereal. And I noticed that most cereal boxes had only male mascots. So that's like one whole part right there. And then nourishment being the other part, I uh, suffered from a pretty serious eating disorder. But the whole thing about me feeding myself, getting my body back to where it was, getting a woman's body back. Yeah, to a healthy these, state. Yeah, 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 these two things really connected. What is your favorite, you said your favorite cereal of all time was? Fruity Pebbles. Why Fruity Pebbles? <laughs> There's definitely some nostalgia there because it's also what I ate like growing up. You know, there's some American grocery stores here. Yeah. And once I got to know that these existed, I was like, holy shit. And it was like Fruity Pebbles for breakfast when I ate breakfast and wasn't late for school every morning. Uh, and that's just, it's sweet, it's good, the milk tastes great. Like, I don't know, I think I judge a cereal by how good the milk tastes after. After all the cereal's gone, you look at the milk and go, would I still drink that? Yeah. And with Fruity Pebbles, you think you're oh, gonna yeah. drink that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And like a lot of people like to, like you know, put their cereal and put the milk in and eat it while it's crispy. I'm yes. the opposite. I like to let it. You sit. like to get it soggy. Yeah. Oh my God. This is this this is this is this is crazy. <laughs> is it blasphemy? <laughs> it's blasphemy. <laughs> I, I, I heard that's blasphemy. If you want to get let the cereal go soggy and eat it, I always eat it right away. Right. I have a terrifying like I have a phobia for melted ice cream as well. For example. Oh, I love melted ice cream. Uh, what? Uh, why? I don't know. And I love uh, Fruity Pebbles with ice cream. Okay, I've never it. tried that. All right, so here we got, um, you're fond of Lucky Charms and uh, these, um, what do you call these? Do you have a name for these? The Marshmallow Boobs. Marshmallow Boobs. <laughs> okay, so like, uh, what's the story behind the Marshmallow Boobs? Um, basically, this, this piece being called Marshmallow Shapes and Sizes Vary. Women's bodies in general, their shapes and sizes are gonna vary, and so. That's what that's what that is representing. And she's cut off his head. Yep, she's cut off his head. That's cutting off ego. So Kali, mother goddess Kali, um, is usually holding a decapitated head, and that symbolizes her cutting off ego, which uh, helps you become an enlightened person. Hmm. Yeah. Decap through decapitation. <laughs> yeah. You told me you guys, um, you guys did an art show, and you did this crazy drink. Tell me about it. I wanted the the show to be really. Fun fun and like for people to have a good time yeah. and I was like oh yeah like let's put cereal boxes up whatever whatever and then Shiv my gallerist at Young Soy Gallery shout out, um, shout out Siv. was like we can do a cereal themed cocktail and I'm like yeah Xavier who was the bartender amazing made this milk in advance he like I don't know what he did but um, used that milk and then added vodka and Kahlua and oh. then we could we, as in the guests, could uh, top it with whatever cereal you wanted. How, how much of it did you have? You know, I had one and I was like, this is going to be the death of me. <laughs> yeah. I have to talk to a lot of people tonight, so I have to drink a lot. Sure. But, okay. Um, no, because I'm terrified. Like, this right now is also terrifying. No, for me. you're <laughs> like, fine. You're fine. You're telling us about this. <laughs> <laughs> you're fine. CFK are fun. They're great. Can I tell you? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. hid behind the fridge for half of that you show. You hid behind that fridge? Yeah. Oh, wow. And so I brought my own stash of gin and tonics. For oh, myself. I'll do it. Yeah. 
And I was, you know, I was nervous just about the show, social anxiety. And so I, every time someone wanted something, I'd go behind the fridge and make myself another. <laughs> and by the end of the show, I passed out. I heard that your solo show went pretty well, though. It overall. did, it did. So, it was sold out, which is yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. It actually sold out before the show, so we turned it into a print launch. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. All right, so uh, here we got another piece. What's the name of this piece right here? This piece is Snap, Crackle, Pop. Snap, Snap, Crackle, Pop. I really like this piece, and this is the piece that drew people's eyes the most, I think. Really? It was also the piece that most people wanted, but it was the last to sell, which... Interesting. <laughs> yeah, um, in the sense of like, people had to check with their families if it was okay to yeah, buy yeah, yeah. it, and it wasn't. <laughs> um, and the reason being for the quite graphic um, depiction over here, of the creation of life, you know. This is definitely your most controversial piece that you've done. For now. Yeah, for now. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm sure you I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and also it's pretty funny. One of the women that was thinking about buying it, she was yeah. like, oh, my husband thought that was a foot. And I'm like, but his feet are here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, I don't think she studied anatomy, did she? <laughs> she had two kids, though. Anyway, so. she bought another one. <laughs> Um, what other mediums like influence you? Like, um, cause we came here and she was playing some wild music as mm. well. Like stuff again from like, you know, the nineties and the eighties as well. It seems that era is really important to you somehow creatively. Oh yeah. I don't think I belong in this, in this era at all. <laughs> everything technological freaks me out. Like everything yeah. from crypto to like fucking just iPads. Like I, I just have an aversion to modern life well, it, it, <laughs> and I paint you know I, yeah, I yeah, yeah. paint everything I I don't know how to like do digital art and when a project comes around where that's necessary I have to hand draw everything first and it takes much longer than someone who's much more educated in the digital or like just has it in their fingers like I don't have that all right even Tony the Tiger gets his moment of fame with you um yeah. let's talk about him yeah, Tony, I mean, Tony gets a lot of fame because he's also really good for any goddess that is sitting on a tiger or a lion, which I have some of the pieces with. So he gets yeah, he gets a lot of coverage. But in this case, for the look, I combined three different Frosties boxes. So you have like Frosted Flakes that are sold in some countries. You have Hong Kong Frosties that have like a specific design. And then you have Frosties wherever else. And like the layout kind of follows a Hong Kong one with the Hong Kong box. It says like Kellogg's and Frosties in, in Chinese. And then yeah. um, it's supposed to be about the sounds of the universe, the whole universe coming from this one source, this one source. <laughs> and so these are like Sanskrit characters. So this one is another way to, of combining like the Chinese and Indian influences, but not in the same way I've done before. With the classic arms and everything else. Yeah. And yeah. I like his smile. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting the whole day to do that. <laughs> oh my God, you finally got to do it. <laughs> it looks like a box, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like the box, the, the box motif and the canvas, they, they blend together so damn well. Like honestly, so. I don't like painting on canvas because yeah. paper gives me much more ability to detail, like the yeah. way I like to, but I really like these pink canvases because they look like boxes. They're really cool. So this one here, this one hits really close to everybody in Hong Kong because this is... This is Honey Stars. I mean, he goes by Captain Star, the mascot. And uh, it's the first of my like Hong Kong serial series, even though I know it's maybe not based in Hong Kong. It's something that a lot of kids that grew up here, like myself, ate along with uh, these two guys. So um, this is gonna be a little series. Watch out for the school pack. All right, that was our interview with Ria Tundramani. Um, I'm loving the recycled advertising and all that stuff and the expression through like cereal boxes, basically. Um, yeah, man, thanks so much for being here. It was awesome. Thanks for, thanks for doing this with me, yeah. There you go. <laughs>